In this video, we're going to review a simple AWS architecture and examine how it's used to power millions of Amazon Alexa devices worldwide. So stay tuned. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Real Life AWS Architecture Examples. Today, we're going to take a look at Amazon Alexa and how it powers the millions of devices that are out there today. Uh, so we're going to take a look at two different kind of themes. The first one is when a user issues a command and it powers uh, another IoT device. And the second kind of reverse flow is when an IoT device triggers a command and that flows into another IoT device or another Alexa enabled device. Uh, so that's what we're going to take a look at today. So let's move over and check this out. So over here, I have a architecture diagram that's provided by the AWS white papers. Um, in my previous video, I've kind of showed you how to access that. There's a ton of great resources that are out there for you to learn about how AWS exists in the wild. So what I want to do with you today is kind of walk through this and describe like what's going on and how this whole thing works to hopefully give you some inspiration of uh, building your own applications. So um, I've just kind of blocked out the bottom section here not to distract you. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this top section here, which is command with Alexa enabled devices. And this is the portion where um, if you imagine right here, this is like an Alexa Echo. You know, I can't draw very well, but that's an echo that you would control with to issue commands to things like, I don't know, telling your Nest device to raise the temperature, uh, turning on your kettle, um, doing things with your uh, lights, things like that. This is kind of what I'm talking about. So they have it very well numbered here for you to kind of understand what each different step uh, points towards. So let's go through on the right and read what's happening. And then we'll kind of look at the diagram and, and try to make sense of it all. So the first step is an Alexa invocation is created by an Alexa enabled device running either the Alexa voice services SDK or using an Amazon Echo. So that's our first step here where we have our device that's sitting right here and that is issuing a command to the Alexa voice service. So we can see here that it does something with the Lambda. So let's check out what that does over on the right. So for number two here, Alexa uses AWS Lambda as its backend logic. Uh, Amazon API Gateway handles validating the authorization and access control for the Alexa skill before it sends data to the correct skill handler. So this is interesting. The fact that they're using lambdas here uh, just goes to show you how ingrained like the kind of serverless paradigm is even in large companies like Amazon and they're using lambdas to power um, Amazon Alexas and there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of them. So it just shows you the kind of trust that they have in this kind of architecture. So we saw that um, the primary event handler is going to be a Lambda here, and that's going to invoke an API gateway. And the API gateway is going to do a bunch of different things here, including authorization, including message forwarding and stuff like that. So let's go over to the right here and read a little bit more. Uh, so they mentioned that it handles validating. So validating um, the authorization and access control for the skill before it sends data to the correct skill handler. Um, so let's take a look at this. So I've done a video on this in the past to use Lambda based um, authentication for API gateway. So what's happening here is when like an event comes in before it actually flows through the primary path, it goes to an authorizer. And you can either implement your own authorizer using a Lambda function like they've done here, or you can use something like Amazon Cognito. Uh, now using this approach, it's a much more kind of flexible approach because you can really back your authorization by whatever data store. You can implement custom logic, a whole bunch of other stuff there. So it's really a lot easier to kind of roll your own authorization mechanism. And that's what they seem to have done here. Um, so let's take a look on the right again for number three. So Amazon DynamoDB holds user authorization data that associates your users to the skill, uh, to their skill and devices while API Gateway verifies whether the request should be accepted. Uh, so that's kind of what I just described. You have this kind of authorization that's flowing here and that's backed by Dynamo. That's fine. A quick pause here. It's also noteworthy that they use Dynamo to store mappings between the user and the skill so that the correct skill handler could be invoked in subsequent steps. So just as an FYI, if authorization is not granted, this whole thing just fails and then we just return all the way back uh, with some kind of exception. But um, they don't really talk about that here. So assuming that is successful, assuming that you know you have a successful authentication, then we want to actually pass the data through to IoT Core. IoT stands for Internet of Things. It's for um, basically devices that 
need to have some kind of internet connectivity, but they're not so similar to a phone in the sense that they have low power usage and very often low compute um, capacity. So that's kind of where IoT comes in and how it's leveraged by AWS. So let's take a look at what they did here over with number four. So uh, AWS IoT Core enables you to connect devices to the cloud. IoT Core sends and received updates based on Alexa invocations. So Alexa invoked, and now we're passing it to IoT Core. Okay, that's fine. Um, then we're going to go to five and six. So what is five and six? Five and six. Each Alexa invocation triggers an IoT rule, which evaluates each invocation and routes the message to other AWS services. That's fascinating. So um, the rule here, they don't really have a kind of section here, but there's a rule that's happening in between, I believe, based on how they described it. And um, the rule is kind of routing it to the correct associated service. Uh, moving on to number six, each Alexa invocation triggers a message to the AWS IoT device shadow. The shadow service then sends a message to the device with settings that need to be updated to match the Alexa request. Got it. So um, if, for instance, you say on your Alexa to say, um, I don't know, Alexa, start the kettle to, to boil a pot of water um, or to boil some water. What would happen here is you have that event flowing through to the Alexa service that's invoking a Lambda, which is just a basic event handler. You're having an authorization that's happening in DynamoDB that's flying through to IoT Core. IoT Core is kind of mapping the command to the correct skill or the correct service that's involved in that skill. And then um, we're moving to the last step, which is the device shadow. Now the device shadow is a means to basically store state on the back end with regards to devices that are out in the wild, so IoT devices. It just basically gives you a very easy means to push state into these devices um, that exist in the Amazon Alexa ecosystem. So that's what it's responsible for there. Um, and then finally, number seven, IoT data is sent securely from IoT core to the devices that need to take action based on the Alexa command. So in this case, um, the shadow would communicate with your kettle or whatever and tell it to actually turn it on or set its temperature, so on and so forth. So that's kind of a very basic flow of how issuing commands um, interact with other devices that exist in the AWS uh, ecosystem. It's a very simple architecture, but I'm sure there's a lot more detail to it, but this kind of just gives you an idea of how this is accomplished on their back end. So in the next portion, uh, I want to talk about the bottom section, which uh, is the opposite, which is when you have devices that are issuing some kinds of commands, and then you need to, to potentially communicate with other devices or speak to an AWS backend. So let's examine that. And I'm just erasing everything here so that um, I didn't take your focus in the previous step here. Okay, so that looks good now. So let's kind of run through this from the opposite perspective. So now we have an IoT device that's kind of sitting there doing something. Maybe it's on a timer, or maybe let's take this kettle example all the way down. So let's assume that you know you, you issued a command to your kettle um, through your Echo, your Alexa enabled device, and you told your kettle to turn on. And the way this kettle works, and I'm making a whole bunch of assumptions here, is when it's done boiling, it's gonna send you a notification on your Amazon Echo. I don't know for a fact if that's how it works, but I assume that's a pretty reasonable way for this whole thing to work. So let's kind of examine this. So number eight, number eight. Uh, in addition, and actually, you know what? Let me just move my head out of here so that you can actually see everything so I'm not in the way. Okay, so number eight, in addition to commands, Alexa can receive updates of device data that happens locally. IoT data originated by your devices can send data to IoT Core using IoT Core SDK. IoT Greengrass or Amazon Free RTOS. I don't know what this is. I don't know what Greengrass is, but what I basically get from this is that devices have the means to push events into the back end um, just using their, their own kind of state and their own computational power. Okay, so we have basically kettle is done boiling that's flowing out here. So I just want to mark that. So kettle, kettle is done, right? I apologize for my terrible writing. Then what happens next? So number nine, messages, uh, number nine, messages from devices are sent to IoT Core, which uses an IoT rule to write data to Amazon Kinesis data streams. So they're kind of neglecting the fact that they're using a topic and a shadow here, but really they're just talking about the rule. So let's just skip directly to that. 
Um, so you have like inbound data and the end goal is to communicate with an AWS integration service, which is Amazon Kinesis in this uh, example. So Amazon Kinesis, if you've never used it before, is an AWS service that is used for um, data streaming. So it can be used for, for some very high throughput data ingestion and data processing. So it seems like that's how they are leveraging it here. And if you imagine it, like this makes sense, right? They have all these devices that exist outside in the world, potentially like hundreds of thousands, if not millions, they need a, main, a means to actually process that and key that by the right ID so that it can be processed and passed off to the right handlers. So that's kind of what they're leveraging Kinesis for. Let's move on to number 10 now, where they talk about this more in detail. So real-time data is streamed from Amazon Kinesis data streams, Amazon Kinesis data analytics, Spark EMR, EC2 Lambda, and other services that extract data for processing. So you basically have this event that's coming in and all this other stuff is firing off and feeding into Amazon Kinesis. Okay, what happens next? Uh, the final step seems to be that the notifications interface to Alexa voice service is invoked in the AWS Lambda function. It gives users a visual and audio indication that new content is available from Alexa domains or an Alexa enabled skill. So after that data is ingested through the Kinesis pipeline, it triggers another Lambda function, which knows which device to push this notification back into. So if we have like an Alexa Echo here, and I apologize for that terrible visual, but that is an Echo, um, this change notification would know that um, this particular kettle, whatever instance ID or whatever account ID it is mapped against is associated with this echo. And whenever this change notification comes in, it'll invoke the voice service, which can trigger that echo to cue a auditory or visual kind of flashing lights to say that your kettle is done boiling and you should go and do something about it. But this just shows you how some of the basic uh, components or building blocks of AWS are levered to create these very rich products that offer all sorts of interesting functionality. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other videos on the right for AWS architecture reviews. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks so much, and I'll see you next time.